Illinois. Good afternoon, Girl Scouts. My name is Megan. I'm with the Girl Scouts of Central Maryland. And today we are going to be doing a STEM activity, um, testing the pH of household items um, using something that we could find at the grocery store. So I'm going to give it just another couple moments uh, as people kind of trickle on um, for our event today. And then we'll go ahead and get going. Um, for today, what we're going to need is a variety of different liquid household liquids that we can test. Um, we can make liquids with our powders. We can go ahead and we can add uh, water to them to make a solution. Um, so we're going to need those, just a variety of household, household liquids. Um, we're also going to need a red cabbage, um, like you get at the grocery store. Mine's in a bag right now. Um, we're going to need uh, to get a pot of water boiling. Um, and we're also going to need a cutting board and a knife and a lot of little cups uh, for all of those liquids that we're going to be testing. Um, I suggest clear cups so that we can see the reaction that's, help, uh, that's happening um, through the cups. But um, So for those of you that just kind of got on, uh, we're going to be doing a red cabbage uh, stem activity. We're going to be testing the pH. Um, let me know where you're watching from. Um, and to start, what we're going to do is we're going to get um, probably about, doesn't have to be exact, I'm using a two and a half quart pot. I'm gonna fill it um, probably about six cups full, almost all the way full. We're gonna need a decent amount of water for this. And I'm gonna get that boiling on the stove. So let me go ahead and get that filled up and you all can go ahead and get that boiling as well. And fill it about halfway full of the two quart pot roughly about like five or six cups. It does not have to be exact. Get that on the stove so it starts to boil. Um, so for those of you um, to start, if you're doing this along with me, uh, we're gonna get a pot of water boiling right now. Um, so about five or six cups is, is about what I'm using for this. And I'm gonna go ahead and tilt you guys and just a quick moment, what we're going to be doing next is we're going to be getting our red cabbage ready for this. Um, so what we're going to need is, um, we're not going to need a full head of red cabbage for this. Um, we're going to use probably about a quarter of a head of red cabbage. Um, so quarter to an eighth, it doesn't have to be the whole head. Uh, so if you did buy a whole head of cabbage or a half head of cabbage, um, I encourage you, once you're done with this for dinner tonight, find something really fun and new that you can make with red cabbage. Um, I think it's really tasty to kind of saute and have as a fun side. Um, so I encourage you to find something to do with that. So I'm going to go ahead and tilt you down. And so we can see my cutting board here. So I have um, part of my red cabbage here and a cutting board and a knife. Um, Red cabbage is a little hardy, so I am using a bigger knife. So if you are younger and you um, don't know how to use a knife on your own, make sure an adult is helping you. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to measure out about uh, a big chunk of it. doesn't have to be exact, but we're on a decent amount. So put that to the side. So I have about, about an eighth of the cabbage. Again, it does not have to be exact. Um, this piece that I have kind of just fits in my hands like this. Um, I really like how red cabbage looks. It kind of looks like a brain with all the folds in it. <laughs> but as our water's boiling, um, we're gonna go ahead and carefully chop our red cabbage into um, smaller pieces. So I'm gonna go ahead and just slice down on, to make kind of just like little pieces of it and it'll start to fall apart once we do that. Um, Red cabbage is a really, really cool vegetable because what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be using essentially the color and the juice of this cabbage to test the pH of different household items, um, different household liquids that we have. And a pH is essentially figuring out if something is an acid or a base. And we'll talk about what that means once we kind of get our liquids all set up. So we're gonna go ahead and chop that up and again if you have extra um it's also a very hearty vegetable um it lasts for a while so if you don't have any ideas of what to cook with it today you can save it for a couple days even a week or so a week or two or so it's very hearty it'll last a while um, this red cabbage has been hanging on for 
quite a bit and it's still nice and good to go. Um, so once I have it kind of cut in slices, I'm going to then again kind of continue to cut it into smaller pieces. And again, um, make sure that um, you have an adult helping you with the knife. Uh, keep your fingers nice and safe. Um, if you know how to uh, use a knife, if you're an older Girl Scout, you can go ahead and do it on your own if your parents allow you to do that. Um, if not, just be careful. And again, I'm just cutting them into smaller pieces. It doesn't have to be exact. They don't have to all be the same size piece. Um, just cutting them up into just smaller slices and pieces. And as we do that, we're just going to keep an eye on our water as it boils. Make sure it doesn't boil over. Um, you might notice that your fingers start to turn a little purple. Um, the reason that we use red cabbage for this experiment is that it's very pigmented. Um, there's a lot of colors in the red cabbage that um, we're going to see seep out um, once we add it to water. All right. I'm just going to go through. And again, it does not have to be perfect with the sizes that you're chopping it into. We're just trying to not have big chunks. We're trying to keep them a little bit more kind of bite-sized pieces. Um, chopping it helps that once we add it to water, we're um, essentially trying to get all of the color out of it. So when we add it to water, when it's in smaller pieces, it is uh, easier for it to um, seep out the juice. So go ahead and get that all chopped up. Um, and what we also will need to have, and I'll show us um, the liquids that I'm going to be testing, um, we're going to want to find a variety of different household liquids or items. Um, we can make uh, solutions by mixing water and the powder uh, into a solution. Um, and I'll show you once we're done chopping this and we get this all set up, the liquids that we're going to be testing. That Again, I just found them around my house. I got a little creative with some of the things that we're going to test. And I encourage you all to get creative as well. Just make sure that it's something that you're allowed to be testing and that you um, have permission to, to use before we do anything. So once we have our cabbage all nice and chopped up, um, we are going to then add it to a glass bowl that can withstand boiling water. Um, Cause we're gonna add the boiling water to it. So we don't wanna be using a plastic bowl. Um, we want to definitely use a glass bowl. So I have my glass bowl right here. And I'm simply just going to put all of that cabbage that I just chopped into my bowl right here. All right. And my water is still getting ready. It's still boiling. Or it's still heating up. It's not quite boiling yet. But you can see that I now have a glass bowl with a lot of chopped red cabbage. Um, so, and you can see it will dye your fingers. My fingers are starting to turn a little purple. Um, and once we do that, we're done with our cutting board and our knife and the rest of the cabbage. Um, a couple other things that um, you can use for this activity um, that I'm gonna be using. Um, I will try and strain off the uh, cabbage. So if you want, um, you can strain it back into the bowl that we're using, or if you have an, uh, the pot that we're using to boil the water, or you can strain it off into another bowl. Um, I also am going to use just like a ladle or something to kind of get the liquid out or you can also use another container that'll be easy for it to pour from. All right. So my water is just about boiling. It's almost ready. So once our water is boiling, if your water is boiling already, oops. All right. Once your uh, water is already boiling, if it's already set and ready, you're going to go ahead and carefully pour pour that boiling water onto the cabbage that we have in our glass bowl. And you're gonna see very quickly that it's going to change colors. And my water is starting to bubble. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you this. Go ahead and take it off the heat. And again, be very careful. This is boiling water, it will be very hot. But we're going to go ahead and do this. Carefully just pour it over the red cabbage. And we're gonna see very quickly, it turned that water into kind of a bluish purple color. We're gonna go ahead and let this sit for about 10 minutes or so. 
Um, and while we do that, we're gonna go ahead and get all of our liquids that we're gonna be testing together. So let me go ahead, I'm gonna go ahead and put this over on my table and I'll come grab you girls in just a quick moment and we'll get our liquids all set up. go ahead and I have set up and I found a lot of different liquids that we can test we don't have to test as many as I am testing um, but I'm gonna go ahead and flip you all so you can see everything that we're working with so I went through and I haven't poured everything and gotten everything ready yet but I have 10 I believe 10 different things that we're going to be testing today um, again, you do not have to be testing the same things that I am testing. You can test whatever you have in your house. Um, so what we have is I haven't poured everything out yet. The only things that I have poured are water for the things that we're going to mix, mix solutions with, my coffee, and my milk. And again, we want to try a variety of different things. And I got a little creative. Um, I found some things that I thought were kind of fun to test. So I'm going to go ahead and I decided I wanted to try hairspray, so I'm going to take some of my hairspray and get just a little bit of it in the cup. Alright, I have my coffee, my milk. We're also going to take test Windex and get some of that going in this cup right here. Um, if you are testing household cleaners, you want to make sure that you don't mix any of them together um, because uh, certain household cleaners like ammonia and uh, bleach are caustic when you mix them together, so we don't want that to be being mixed. We're going to keep everything separate. So for our, anything that we're testing with the powder, so I'm testing baking soda. Um, and you're going to want to go ahead and just mix that with water to make a solution. And I have a spoon in here, so I poured some baking soda in there. I'm just going to mix that all together. Um, as you're testing different liquids, um, I do have coffee here, but darker liquids, it's going to be a little bit harder for us to see the reaction with because it's a darker color. All, all of my liquids, except for my Windex and my coffee, are going to be lighter in color. Um, I'm curious to see what you girls are testing, what you're trying with. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and get my salt water going as well. Um, something that's really fun to test with this is different types of water. Um, so if you have bottled water, or purified water, or tap water, I'm going to make some soapy water here. I have some vinegar. And I already have, just I'm going to keep one with just plain water in it. And then I decided that I was also going to, even though I'm testing uh, dish soap, I decided I'm also going to test shampoo. So I'm going to go ahead and get all of our, uh, all of our liquids mixed up and ready. And I've also labeled my cups so that once we get things going, we're going to be able to see what we're, what we have. And as we do this, our, um, our red cabbage is starting to turn very purple. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to grab my ladle so that we can get things kind of going. And mix it up a little bit. Um, and as you mix it, you're going to see that it's going to turn this really pretty vibrant uh, violet color of purple. Um, I'm going to go ahead and pull out just some of the liquid with my ladle right here. I'm going to go ahead and show you girls that it's this really pretty kind of purple color. Let me show you girls can see that. And again, it's still very hot, so be careful. So it's this really pretty violet purple color. Um, I'm gonna let that keep soaking for another couple minutes. About 10 minutes is the most that you would need for it to all kind of mix together and see about the color. Um, and what we're essentially doing is we're just getting all of the color out of the skins of uh, our red cabbage with the boiling water. And it happens very, very quickly. So. Keep letting that soak, um, and then what we'll do on um, another couple moments will be I um, want you girls to get all of your liquids together. Again, you do not have to test the same things that I'm testing. 
get creative with it. I decided to get creative and test some different, you know, beauty products I was curious about. So I have my shampoo and my hairspray, as well as other things that I found in the kitchen or things that I'm cleaning with. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to grab my strainer so that we can strain that liquid off. Using hot pads because remember our things are a little hot. Um, but as we're going with this, um, we're going to want to um, get the chunks of cabbage out because we just need the water for this. So, what I'm going to do is very carefully, I'm going to make sure you girls can see, just simply strain off into my pot right here using a whole double boiler situation to strain it off. Making a little bit of a mess, that's okay, we'll clean up. I'm just pouring off the cabbage. All right, it smells like cabbage now. I'm gonna go ahead and pull off our extra cabbage and just putting that off to the side. And now in my pot right here, I have just the purple red cabbage water. And I'll go ahead and I'll scoop it out into my cup so we can see. And again, it's still very hot, so be careful. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and fill, just use my ladle to fill this cup right here so that it will, it'll be easy to pour with. And what we're going to do is we're going to add some of this to the different liquids that we have sitting in front of us to see what their pH is. And again, our pH is figuring out um, if something is an acid or a base. And our pH scale goes from the number zero all the way up to 14. Uh, numbers zero to six are acids, which are typically things that we think are kind of sour. Um, when I think of an acid, I think of lemons a lot. And our bases are anything that is from a number eight to a 14. Um, and bases are a lot of things that are kind of cleaners. We think of bleach as a very basic, very common base that we think of. Um, and water is a neutral or a number seven. So that's smack dab in the middle. It's neither an acid or a base. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you that I can add this just to my water. It does ink a lot, and we're gonna see that it stays the same purple color. And not everybody's tap water is a true seven pH. Um, to have a true seven, a true neutral, um, it'll need to be something that um, is purified. There's usually a little bit of inconsistencies, but for the most part, all waters will be in that same kind of seven range. It might be like a 6.7 from up to like a 7.3 or so, but it all kind of still hones in on that neutral. So what we're going to do is we're gonna go ahead and try this on different liquids. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna start with our vinegar because I think it's my favorite reaction that I know will happen. So we're gonna go ahead and just simply add it in and we're gonna see that it turns pink. So when we're testing our pHs, um, what will happen is anything that is an acid is going to be ranging more on a red to kind of light purple kind of color. And anything that's a base is going to go from anywhere from blue to green to yellow. Um, so we're gonna go through and we're gonna see um, if something is an acid or a base, depending on what color it changes. And it might not change color. It might be something that's neutral. So I'm gonna go ahead and we're gonna try the shampoo here. And I've added my shampoo in, and we're gonna see that it actually turned about a kind of like medium pink. It's not as red as their vinegar. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you. So our vinegar is very, very red, and our shampoo ended up being a little bit of a lighter pink. So that means it's not um, as acidic as vinegar. And as I do this, we're gonna to start to organize our cups in an order from most acidic to most basic um, based on the colors that they turn. So right now I have our water, which is a neutral. 
our vinegar, which is an acid, our shampoo, which turned pink, kind of pinkish purple, um, so we know that's an acid. And we're gonna continue to kind of go through. So next we have our soapy water, which is already a little bit blue, but it will still change colors depending on how much we add in here. So as I add this in, it turns into a much, much deeper blue color. So that means it is a base. It has um, a pH that's higher than seven. And we're gonna keep on testing. Um, so I have salt water here, and I was curious to see if salty water would be the same as regular water. So we're gonna go ahead and test. And we're gonna see what it looks like. And I'm gonna say they look about the same um, so we're going to kind of put them just right next to each other for right now. It looks like it might be a little bit lighter, um, a little bit more of a pinkish purple than a true violet purple. So I'm going to go ahead and put it a little bit closer to the acid side, but I still think it's sitting at a neutral. Um, next we have our baking soda and water. And if you've ever done an experiment where you've mixed baking soda and vinegar together, we know that they create an explosion. That is because vinegar is an acid and baking soda is a base. And acids and bases will always react with each other. And so we see that it turns blue as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna put it right there. We'll kind of figure out where we need to slide those. I think they're probably about the same, so I'm gonna put them right next to each other. All right. Next, we're gonna test our Windex. We're gonna see, I'm not actually sure what this will turn into. A little bit more so we can see and it's looking like a really dark teal kind of color it's starting to lean a little bit more towards the green let me see if you can see there's some bubbles in here but it's kind of leaning to be a little bit more green so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna put that further down here so because it's turning a bluish green color we know that it is a base all right so next we're gonna test our milk to see what color our milk turns. We're going to go ahead and add that in. And we might need to add a decent amount for this one because it is milk. We can see it's purple milk now, so it didn't really change that much. So I'm going to keep this up here with our um, water and our um, salt water because it didn't really change colors. Obviously, it got a little bit lighter, but that's because the milk is white but it's still sitting at a purple color, so it makes me think it's closer to a neutral. And again, you can test whatever liquids you have at your house. You don't have to be testing the same things that I'm doing. Um, we have our coffee, and I'm not sure how well we're gonna be able to see because coffee is such a dark liquid, but we're gonna see if I can add some to see if there's any slight change in color. I'm gonna hold it up to the light and as I hold it up to the light, it is looking, and it's hard for you girls to see, but it is looking kind of a purplish pink color. So I'm just going to leave it right there. We're not entirely sure because this does work better with clear liquids. I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit more hairspray into our cup for our last one. And we're going to see what the pH of my hairspray is. Ooh. And we can add a little bit more so you girls can see. That turns a very dark blue color. Alright, so that means it is a base and it's a little bit more purplish blue. So I'm going to go ahead and put it right there and I'm going to go ahead and show you pull up a little bit closer the rainbow of colors that I have created. Go ahead and slide it so you girls can see. So we've created our rainbow of different color liquids. So our most acidic that we have is our vinegar. Um, and our most basic is the Windex. Go ahead and show you. Um, if you do have bleach, um, so our pH scale will go even further than um, red to bluish green. If you have um, 
bleach that you can test. Um, bleach will be kind of a greenish yellow color. And if you have drain cleaner, that's probably one of the most basic things that we might have in our house. Um, I didn't have any, but that is a, about a 12 on our pH scale. So that's gonna be that bright kind of yellow color. And it's really neat to see everything change. Um, but I hope you girls enjoy experimenting with STEM and I'm looking forward to see what you all tested. Put your pictures of your rainbows um, down below and I look forward to seeing it and uh, happy Tuesday and enjoy your STEM.